Alright, hey guys, what's up? Welcome to BT Ski Tutorials, and this is another episode of Unity Quick Tips. Today's quick tip is going to be going over the basic variable types that you have available to you inside of Unity 3D. So why don't we go ahead and just jump right into it. Um, so first of all, let's define a variable and exactly what a variable is. A variable, in simple definition, it basically is uh, something that remembers uh, a bit of information. Um, so I like to think of a uh, variable as basically a container, and then the variable type determines what type of information that particular variable uh, can hold, whether that's a single number, a couple of numbers, whether it's some letters, uh, whether it's a whole number, a number with decimal points, uh, whether it is the transform of a game object so that it can quickly access where that game object is in 3D space and how it's rotated and what it's scaled to, or whether or not uh, you are saving a game object which can either be already in your scene or a game object that you have saved in your project called a prefab which you can copy and paste into your scene uh, saving it inside of a variable of game ob or of type game object, but we'll get to that in a second. So let's first go over the f uh, first four on this list because these are probably the most common variable types in I th I think any programming language that you can find. Um, so the first one is integer. So let me move over to make sure that you guys can see it. Uh, so we have an integer. Basically, an integer is a whole number. And for short, it is uh, written as int. So if you want to uh, declare an integer variable inside of JavaScript, uh, you would write var, uh, let's say, uh, how many bullet, or let's see, what is a good, um, let's see, how many grenades you have. Grenades, hopefully I spelled grenade right. And then uh, int, and let's have by default you start with three. So that is how you would declare an integer inside of Unity 3D. Um, so basically, if you were to try to assign uh, something that isn't a whole number to an integer, it's going to round to the nearest whole number. Uh, so integers are just always whole numbers. Um, let's take a look at the next one, and that is a float. So a float variable is just like an integer, it's a number, except it doesn't have to be a whole number. It can have a decimal point. Uh, and then you can only go down to a certain number, I think it's like, I don't know, I want to say like 20 something, like 20 decimal places down or something, some big number like that that you do not need to worry about. Um, so yeah, you can uh, make it as you can divide up the number as much as you want. It could be 0 .00 whatever. So let me go ahead and show you what it looks like when you declare uh, a float variable. So let's do something like shields uh, because uh, let's say you want to have a system where you have shields in between 0 and 10. Um, in order to have your shield recharge uh, gradually and nice and smoothly and look good on your HUD, you're going to need a float because if you tried doing that with an integer, it'd be like eh, 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 and it wouldn't really look good. Uh, so we're going to use a float for that. So let me just quickly show. It would look like um, shields uh, float equal uh, 10. So that would be one way of declaring a, a float variable. Another way that you could do it is you can get rid of that float part and you can just do 10.0 and when you do uh, point something unity is automatically going to determine that you are trying to declare a float variable if you do not have a pragma strict in your uh, script uh, but I prefer the first method it just all around typically works better um, so yeah that is how I would write it so yes, I think you guys know what a float is by now, so next let's talk about a boolean. Uh, basically what a boolean is, is very simply true or false. Uh, that's the only thing that a boolean can be. Um, so this might be good for something like aiming. So aiming equals true, you'd be aiming down your gun, false, uh, you'd be down like this. Uh, so it would be a good way of just keeping track of whether or not uh, you're aiming or not. So let's go ahead and do an example. Um, and let's use aiming as an example. So var aiming boolean equal false, just like that. But if we want to start the game uh, where you are aiming, we're going to write true like that. So that would be how you declare a boolean variable. Uh, and you just write true and false whenever you want to change that variable. So that is what that variable is for. Um, oh, also, you can put it inside of an if statement. So we could do like if aiming uh, 
then do something. I don't know. So that would be a basic example of how you would use um, a boolean inside of an if statement. All right, let's jump. Oops, no, I didn't want to do that. I just want to pull that over here. Uh, let's next look at a string. So a string is basically a string of letters, numbers, or symbols. Um, so pretty much anything that you can type on your keyboard. So this is just like typing into a Word file and you copy and paste. It is a string of letters and you're really looking at the word itself and all the symbols. So uh, let's quickly go over how you would declare a string and edit a string. Uh, so let's say player name. That's the variable that we're going to do. So var player name string equal uh, Bob. So that is how you would want to declare the string or of course if you want it to just be blank you can put it like that and then somewhere in the code you can do player name equal whoops Bob just like that because you need the parentheses inside of code for uh, unity to know that you are actually talking about a string. Um, or, but probably realistically, you would want to use the input menu or the GUI uh, function to let the player actually type in what name they want. But that is the basics of how a string works. Uh, the next variable type we have is a little bit more advanced. It is a vector 3. A vector 3 is basically a point in 3D space, and more simply, it's three float variables that represent a point in 3D space, but uh, doesn't have to represent a point in 3D space. It can represent a bunch of different things. Um, so let's just quickly go over what it looks like to declare a uh, vector 3. So var um, just spot. We'll just do a spot in 3D space. Oops. Vector. Oops. Vector 3. Um, and then you can declare it in the inspector. You can edit it to exactly what you want. Uh, and then there's a bunch of other ways. Um, but I think you could also do it like this vector three uh say zero one comma five point whatever let's say that is for some reason a spot that you want to remember um so yeah that is basically uh the very basics of what a vector three is later on i'm going to do an, an episode where i talk much more advancedly about vector threes and everything about vector threes uh, the next is a quaternion. A quaternion is almost just like a vector 3, uh, except you're probably never going to want to edit a quaternion in code uh, number by number because quaternions are really advanced, but basically a quaternion is a rotation in 3D space. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just jump over that one because it's just like a vector 3, except, well, all right, fine, I'll, I'll just quickly write var uh, look quaternion and that's probably as far as you're going to want to take quaternions and then uh, after that you just save them as variables but I'm going to talk more about quaternions in other episodes I just want you guys to know that a quaternion is a rotation uh, variable all right how much time do I have left it looks like I got a lot of time left okay uh, next I want to go over what a game object variable is so basically a game object variable like saving a number or a string of letters or a position or rotation it saves a game object it remembers so let's say you want the enemy to remember the player so that it can like track it uh, through its pathfinding or just always looks at the player or something like that like a turret um, you would save that inside of a game object or you can do a transform uh, because a transform will more directly uh, you can write like transform.position or transform.rotation and you can get the position or rotation of that particular transform. So when you do a transform, you're actually remembering just the transform part of that game object. Whereas if you do game object, you're remembering the whole game object. And that's useful if you want to pull out parts like its render or its uh, a certain script that it has. Like you want to apply damage to the player so you access the player script and then you minus equal... Uh, damage from the variable health or something like that. Um, let me go ahead. Actually, I'm going to use a real world example. Uh, so here we are inside of Mono Develop, and I'm inside of the. Whoops, wrong button. Let me go back inside of the gun script, as you can see. 
and then I declared the variable bullets. So we're going to remember a prefab inside of this variable um, because we want to be able to duplicate this bullet uh, many, many times because you fire lots of bullets inside of video games. So we're actually going to save a game object as a prefab inside of our um, actual project file and then we are going to copy and paste that into our scene as we uh, fire bullets. Uh, so let me show you what it looks like inside of Unity once you declare a variable like that. So here we have bullet uh, and we don't have it set to anything. So let me move over so that you can see um, inside of the project window. I have it inside of a folder called bullets and here is the bullet prefab that we have. So let me go back. I lost the pistol. Uh, there it is. Okay. So all I would do is simply drag and drop on top of bullet and now we have saved a prefab inside of that variable so that anywhere in the script we can instantiate and instantiate is another word for copy into our scene lots of bullets. Um, so yeah, I think that pretty much is going to wrap up the general introduction of all the different variable types. Well, not all of them. There's actually way, way, way more variable types that I did not go over, but these are the very general variable types that I think are good to know and just introducing you into what you have available to you. But uh, there's a bunch of different variable types, like pretty much any different type of component you can use as a variable, like renderers, audio sources, animations, um, meshes, uh, materials, um, textures, colors, uh, there's just so many uh, different things that you can um, save inside of variables and different variable types that you have. So hopefully this video was a good introduction. So yeah, until my next episode, I'll see you guys later and keep making games.